Oh, what if we started this episode with two empty chairs? Like right now, we're both out of our chairs. No audio, just two empty chairs, and then we come in. Out of you, lady. What is this shit? Well, I'm not your butler. <laughs> well, I mean, they're <laughs> different <laughs> colors. <laughs> Wait, did you measure the distance between these two? This, this is the biggest problem. This is on this side, and that mm -hmm. one's on that side. And you have a it's book right there. that we have to deal with every time it's a disaster. I think we should just restart, clear out all our videos, and start, <laughs> and start from the beginning. Hello, and welcome back to Monetize Me. My name is Jay. And my name is Mac. So, at this point, we've covered, in our past couple of videos, both co-founding and solo founding, and some of the advantages and disadvantages that come along. And today is just going to be a kind of takeaway video. What we've learned from our experiences, as well as some takeaways we think you guys might want to keep in mind using the information that we've given you and how to use it going forward. Yeah. So, I mean, first one, just going back to our solo founding video, or I guess there's a couple of videos. Um, don't shy away from founding a company by yourself. It's definitely a more overwhelming and riskier task and you feel like um, you're all alone, but you can still, again, it's you can still have a successful company as a solo founder. And as we talked about in our solo founding video, there are many companies um, that are solo founded that are more successful, more successful, yeah, quotation marks, statistically, than companies that are founded with a co-founding team. Yeah, we went over a study when we first introduced some of the problems that founders are going to face that talked about solo founders having more potential for long-term success than co-founders. Just because it's just you, maybe there's an advantage because there's less disagreements or co-founded relationships tend to fizzle over time. But solo founders had long-term success, which is really unique and something that I didn't expect to take away from that research at the time. But definitely don't be afraid. If, if your only reason to not start a business is because you don't want to do it alone, just go do it. Because there are so many worse reasons to do something than, well, I'm going to be alone. I'm going to have to learn on my own. And it's, it's just going to be hard. Well, it's going to be hard with co-founders too. Being a solo founder is not harder than co-founding. And being a co-founder is not easier just because you have more people. It's going to be hard both ways. And for different reasons, you might as well start if, if that's your, your problem. Yeah, I mean, both solo founding and co-founding are daunting tasks. It's not like yeah. co-founding is going to make it any easier. It's just that co-founding, you have more people. It's more social. You have moral support. Yeah. There's just more. You feel like you're part of, um, I guess, a community as compared to I'm starting this business by yeah. myself. And you can always look forward to having employees or even having uh, business advisors yeah. to, to help you with that moral support and to help you stay enthusiastic um, about your idea. But it's never a reason that you, sh that you should use to discourage yourself from starting a company. Oh, I can't find somebody else to start this with me, so okay, I'm not so, going to start it. So do it. <laughs> oh, go find is there somebody. Still, is go there still, still a business need? If there's a need and there's value in solving that problem that you've identified, you'll be able to find co-founders, co just like you'll be able to find funding. Whether or not you need it, if you're solving a valuable problem and providing value, you will be able to get funding. That's just gonna happen. But you have to be credible. You have to outline exactly what your plan is and say, this is the problem, this is how I'm solving it, and this is why solving it this way is valuable, and this is the outline of my plan. And people will get on board. And the more people you tell, the more input you can get back. So spread it. Don't, don't be one of those people that is like going to kind of try to hide their idea because they think that their idea is special. The more people you talk to about it, the more you can hone in exactly what you're trying to do. Yeah. So that's the key with solo founding is, yes, you don't have an array of perspectives, but you can have an array of perspectives by not being them. so guarded about your idea. And that's, I feel like a lot of solo founders fall into that category of, hey, this idea is too important to be shared with others everybody's going to try to steal it. It's too much of a genius idea. First of all, get out of your fucking asshole. <laughs> get out. <laughs> to stop stop thinking you're the be you're the most genius person in the world cuz you probably aren't. Just share your idea I, with others. I apologize to that one person watching that is. 
keep doing your work. <laughs> I apologize to you, Elon Musk. <laughs> Assuming that Elon oh, yeah. Musk watches our video. Anyway. Or, or doesn't share it. I mean, he's, he, he seems plenty vocal about the, the stuff he's working on. Yeah, I mean, I think it, you should share it. It, it, yeah. it gets you outside of that whole idea of um, I'm alone because you're sharing your idea with other people and they're obviously going to give you advice. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Even if they don't know anything about business, everybody will try to give you advice. And that helps. Talking yeah. to other people really helps um, when moving forward with your business. Yeah. So then getting along in that, whether or not you're a solo founder looking for co-founders or planning on getting co-founders, one thing you want to make sure you do is rigorously interview your co-founders. Don't just be like, hey, I have a cool idea. And they want to, they're, they're like, yeah, I'm on board. They want to work with you. And you go start a, your business. That's Don't do that because things can go poorly. Make sure you dig. Try to find as many red flags as you can reasons not to, to work with them because if you find a red flag later on, then that's going to cause problems. You want to interview your co-founders like you would any other employee to make sure that you know what role they're filling, know exactly what they're going to be doing for you, and make sure that they're on board for how much equity you're prepared to give away, how what the split's going to be. Are you going to go find another co-founder and where the business is at currently and where you want to go? Make sure you have everything fleshed out. Don't just assume that things will work out once they're on board and we get moving. Yeah, I mean, I would I would even say don't find co-founders unless you have a role in mind. <laughs> you're yeah. you don't really need another founder if you don't know what they're going to do. I just need somebody so they can start the business with me. So, yeah. I mean, do your research if you see that hey, I want to take on this role and I really don't want to take on for example, I don't want to take on the tech side. I just really want to just focus on the business side. I have all my connections here, I have all the network I just need somebody to fill that tech side. I've been doing a little bit of it. I've been kind of learning and trying to get these things done, but it's so frustrating to me and it's taken up a lot of my time. Yes, now I'm going to go out and be like, hey, I need a founder, specifically a tech founder. And maybe you, you have a friend who's tech-minded or tech-oriented. Yeah. Or can introduce you. Or they can introduce you to somebody and do the do your homework, do your research. This is somebody that you always have to worry, that you have to, um, work right every day. And this is somebody that you're going to have to trust to hold their own. Right. right. So it's not an employee. You're not just hiring them. And then, Oh, every year you have, or not even every year, maybe even every month you're like, okay, what did you do this month? This is somebody who you kind of have to, um, trust and they have, to, they have to have their own vision. Right. Yeah. So just like you have a vision for the company, they also have to have some ideally, like, ideally the yours. same vision, yeah. but they have to have a vision where, okay, they don't need direction, right? You don't need to be like, hey, do this or do that. They already know because they're building out the tech side. You guys have meetings about what you should be doing next, but the vision should be the same. They should be able to make decisions that you didn't already discuss beforehand that align with that vision of the company. Yeah. So they have to kind of hold their own. Which, but, yeah. yeah, yeah, I would say, which kind of brings us to another takeaway, which is you you're going to want to... Weigh the pros and cons between getting a co-founder and getting an advisor and employees. So one is an hopefully autonomous person joining the team to take care of some role. And another is an advisor that has experience in that industry that can give you direction and maybe point you to employees or, or just other connections to help finish that role, whether that's helping you finish it or maybe you hire employees and delegate. You want to weigh is it worth giving up the equity to have a co-founder work on this so that I don't have to focus on it at all and he should be the owner of that? Or do I just need to manage this and maybe hire an employee or get an advisor to learn more about what, what it takes to make it in this industry? Wh which one of these would be better for, for me? And this is where advisors can be super handy. Maybe they cost equity. Maybe they're looking for mentorship experiences and they want to just help you out or maybe you're paying them. I don't know. But an advisor can help you in an industry that you're not super familiar with, establish a foothold and make connections, whether that means introducing you to a co-founder or just, hey, this is how things work. So if you're getting employees, make sure that they can do these certain things and it'll help you delegate so you don't need to go get a co-founder if that's not something that you wanted to do. Yeah. So let's uh, like let's go back to the example of having a tech minded or tech oriented friend. Right. So like you can actually talk to them about the problems you're having in the tech space. So like, let's say you don't want a co-founder specifically for the role because you're kind of taking up 
like the whole role and you don't see somebody else coming like you don't see yeah. a role for anybody else you can have that person as an advisor be like hey have like monthly check-ins with them be like hey this is what i'm working on this is what i'm this is the tech stack i'm using and they can then bring uh outside perspective they can bring an informed outside perspective to your decision making like let's say you're using python for whatever reason and um you're having to go through a lot of loops and stuff they can be like why are you being so stupid just use java <laughs> so stupid it's so um, blunt uh, but you, the, the, what I'm trying to say is you don't always have to bring on a co-founder. Let's say you were looking for a co-founder and it just didn't work out. The the person that you were You didn't find at, a good match. You, didn't find a good match. Maybe that person can still be an advisor. Maybe you can be like, hey, um, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're not looking to join a company or whatever the case is. Maybe you can yeah. be like, hey, um, would you mind if we emailed or called or whatever the case is? Um, and I just need advice on this and that yeah absolutely. And I, I think most people will be willing to answer a couple of questions a month that's not a it's, not a, big it's, deal. it's, it's not also a huge commitment. it's also a good experience for them to be like oh i wonder if i could help in this industry and it could help them gain insight into what you're working on as well as your unique problems are probably entertaining for them if you're yeah. coming to them like how would you do this it gives them a chance to kind of exercise that part of their brain that they don't usually get to to use to be like oh that is a really interesting problem how would you do this maybe maybe think about this and you can kind of brainstorm a bit. Um, another thing is learning. The biggest takeaway, I think, outside of don't be scared to, co or to solo found is you need to learn how to learn. And that is the one thing we're going to, we talk a lot about don't be concerned about knowing everything before you go in. You should not have everything crossed off, but you're never going to be able to do that before you start a business. Don't hold off on starting a business until you know everything you could possibly need to know because that's just never going to happen. The biggest thing or biggest advice I would want to give anybody is learn how to learn and do research. That way, whatever industry you go into, you'll be fine. Because if you can do your research and figure out exactly what you need to do, what steps you need to take in that industry and what you need to learn and how you learn best learn that as, a, as an individual, you'll be fine. Because then no, if you learn how to learn, every problem is solvable. You just have to give it time instead of, oh, well, I need to know exactly what to do for everything in this industry, which is just not plausible. Yeah, I mean, I think in anything you do in life, learning is a very yeah. big part of it, but especially when you're first starting out a business and especially when it's your first business. Yeah. When it's your first business, you have to be prepared to learn like crazy. That's, that's your number one task. It's not doing this or doing that. It's I have to learn how to start a business. I have to yeah. learn what to do to begin with. I have to learn how to bring on co-founders if I want to bring on co-founders. You have to learn everything. You have to be of the mindset that I don't know anything because even if you think you know something, you probably have it. Like if you if you start researching it, you probably find out some stuff that you didn't know, or yeah. your hypotheses get invalidated because hey, I thought that. I could just go up to Uber and sell them a bunch of like, like sell them a bunch of cars. Let's say you're, you're cars. Okay. Cars. <laughs> no, let, let's say you have this idea in your head that, Hey, I'm just going to make electric cars, electric self-driving cars. And I'm just going to be able to sell them to Uber today. All right. Maybe, There's, maybe Uber doesn't want a fleet of electric self-driving cars. Or they cars. already made their own. Or, or they already, you do your research and all of a sudden the assumptions you had just, are completely invalidated yeah. because the things you thought were so tr true turn out not to be. And that's yeah. why learning is very important. And I feel like you should spend a lot of time doing research and you spe should spend a lot of time checking the assumptions you have. But yeah. if I assume that I need a website, actually do the research. Do I actually need a website? When reasons, do I need yeah. a website? Right. Because uh, in, in, in business, there's no, um, there's no Bible. There's no, uh, strategy or book that just tells you exactly what to do and it works out for every business. It all depends on context. It all depends on your situation. Yeah. So you have to be really good at learning to adapt to everything that you need to do. And you have to be decisive, right? When a decision, when you need to make a decision on something and it's taking very long to make a decision, make a decision. If yeah. it's taking you, let's, let's say if you if you have a co-founding team, you have like three people on the team and you've spent three meetings on this thing and it's the same conversation over yeah. and over again, make a decision. Yeah. If, if nobody can agree on a decision, that's a huge problem. Yeah. Well, that's a problem within your group, not necessarily the problem itself, but also 
Make it, you should always have data and reasons to back up your decision. Exactly. It should never, three meetings is a lot to just make one single decision. But if you have the data and the reasons and metrics behind the decision and you're weighing those, it's it shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, you might have to try one out and see if it fails or succeeds and then come back and try another. But you you should know exactly what comes along with each decision. Which comes to which comes from like reverse engineering. Where where do I want to go? I I want to get to this end point. I want to sub, send, sell sell ten thousand of these prototypes. Okay, well reverse engineer. Well, in order to get these made, I need this. In order to even know how to build that, I need this. And so I should talk to this. Reverse engineer it, and then back it up with data and metrics and reasons why you want to make certain decisions. And then you can just make them, and then learn from. The results, whether they were good or bad decisions, you can always learn from them. You just have to make a decision backed by some sort of assumption and data. Yeah, being divisive is... <laughs> divisive. <laughs> divisive. Decisive. <laughs> being a device is the most important. Being decisive is probably one of the more important things that you need in business because if you, if you uh, slack off and don't make the decision then you might run into an opportunity where you get a, a missed opportunity yeah. or the, if people can't decide on one thing, that's, I think the, the whole co-founding thing where if you, you can't decide as a team on, on a decision, that's a problem of ownership. That's a problem with um, the fact that your roles are not distinct enough because if your roles are distinct, Somebody should always have Someone's a deciding has a final power. say. Yep. Yes. Somebody has a final say. If you can't decide on buying servers, right, and the tech person keeps saying we need servers, we can't use AWS, and it just everybody just keeps arguing about that. Why is the CTO person, making the decision? Yeah, yeah, that tech person should be making the final decision on yes, we're going to have on-site servers because he owns that, yeah. right? Absolutely. If it's two, if it's two people involved in tech and one of them kind of is involved in business, that's a problem of roles. That's a problem yeah. of where I we didn't distinctly define what each person's role is, and we should do a better Which, job. It's fine if there's overlap, but one person you should give them this the deciding power. Yeah, to the ownership of like yes, you're working in this, but because this is my ownership realm or whatever, I get to make that final decision. Yeah, and I, I mean these are all I think take, takeaways that you should take with a, a grain of salt. I feel like a couple of them like learning is are very important, and they apply yeah. to all situations, but like. For example, solo founding, that it, it, it all depends on your situation. So it does. Are well, your, your situation, your personality, exactly, and your yeah. industry. Yeah, absolutely. Even being decisive can depend on, you're, you might be in an industry that takes years of research before making a decision. And, and that happens sometimes too. Yeah. But, you know, these are all takeaways that might be helpful to you, probably are helpful to you. And we, we just feel like these are things that you should be uh, thinking about before starting right. a startup while in a startup and even after, you know, even after you sell your startup or whatever, um, you should be able to reflect on these and be like, this is why our startup succeeded because yeah. of these different things. Or failed. Or failed. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully these takeaways are helpful and you get some value out of them. If not, uh, let us know and click the like button and don't dislike it. And I'll see you next time. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. He keeps forgetting to come and subscribe. I mean, I tell him every time, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you gotta pick it up. That's your role. You own. I, I, I own the comment and subscribing <laughs> session. Bye. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, we oh we would. I think we covered everything. I noticed while we were talking about soul funding, we covered a lot of the other points. It just in yeah. the context of soul funding. Um, the reason I was saying that let's just keep it loose is because um, we're when we talk more, when we're like more going back and forth, we um, we give a lot of good advice that we don't necessarily, we, we're not really rushed to say something, you know what I mean?